Namaste, and welcome to another episode of Uladu Narpadu. So today we're going to tackle one of those persistent misunderstandings that a lot of people who don't uh, think deeply <laughs> fall into on the path. When the Holy Scriptures proclaim you are that which is declared to be the Supreme. If you think, I am that, the Supreme, and not this, the body composed of five sheaths, instead of oneself knowing and being oneself by scrutinizing what am I, it is due to absence of strength and maturity of mind because that indeed always exists as one's own reality. Now the, <laughs> the sentence structure, the syntax there is kind of tangly and I had to edit it quite a bit and it's still difficult in English. In Tamil, I guess it makes sense. <laughs> but what he's saying here is that Okay, people read in the scriptures, in the Upanishads, you are that, tattvamasi. So they think, oh, I am that. <laughs> and that's it. <laughs> no, that's not it. See, the problem is the structure of language itself is dualistic. I am that. And when we're talking about ontology, we always talk about a sentence having three parts, the subject, the object, and the predicate. So what do we got here? I am that, subject, object, predicate. So in other words, this is still duality. This is still making a distinction between I and that. So if you self-consciously assert, I am that, you're, you are different from that. <laughs> you see the point? There's still duality. You have not arrived. Granted, it may be the last stage of duality. It may be the final uh, last gasp of duality. But all of the Mahavakyas are like that. Uh, Sarva Kalvidam Brahma means everything that be is Brahma, Brahman, the Absolute. But then there's still a distinction between the things that are and the absolute, you see? So that's still duality. Even the magnificent Gayatri Mantra is still duality because it goes Om, Bhur, Bhuva, Swaha, Tat Savitur Varenyam. Tat Savitur Varenyam means that supreme or that origin or source of all energies we accept as the qualified one. See, this is even more uh, elementary or more uh, far away from actual duality. So even though Gayatri Mantra is wonderful and highly beneficial in so many ways, it's still not the ultimate truth. So what is? Well, Ramana says it here. Knowing and being oneself by scrutinizing what am I? What am I? Who am I? Where have I come from? Where is my origin, my source? What is my real nature? 
And all these questions have to be gone into, not verbally and philosophically, but experientially. That means looking within oneself. Huh? Yes, in the beginning you can contemplate the question, what am I? What am I? Am I this body? Am I this energy of life? Am I this mind? Am I this intelligence? Am I something beyond even that? Huh? Maybe I'm pure bliss? Huh? These are the five sheaths. The Anamaya Kosha is the, the physical body. The Pranamaya Kosha is the energy body. Manomaya Kosha is the mind. Vijnana Maya Kosha is the intelligence. And Ananda Maya Kosha is pure bliss, but it's also mixed with ignorance. So discarding those five sheaths, neti neti, this is not it, this is not it, this is not it. Then what am I? Am I these thoughts? No, that's part of the mind. Am I this life that moves from body to body? animating the body and making it appear to be alive and real? No, that's the pranamaya kosha. Am I this uh, analyzing and ontologically contemplating uh, process of meditation? Raja yoga? No, I'm not that either. That's the vijnanamaya kosha. And finally, am I this, uh, this bliss? Huh? Ignorance is bliss, right? <laughs> the Anandamaya Koshi. Am I this ignorant bliss that thinks, oh, duh, everything's okay? <laughs> no, I'm not that either. I am beyond all of that. I am beyond all conceptions. Because conceptions always involve distinctions, and distinctions are duality. So to get beyond dualistic thinking and conceptual thought, the Buddha, for example, prescribed the jhanas, the eight types of meditation that he called mental bases. Uh, they're bases, they're platforms. And on those platforms, certain cognitions take place. For example, the first jhana is directed thinking. One takes up a topic and thinks it through from beginning to end. And the Buddha's discourses, the Buddha sutras, are wonderful examples of, <laughs> of this first jhana in action. You should read them. Huh? Go to suttacentral.net and read some of these. They're wonderful. But that's only the first jhana. Second jhana is directed thinking without verbalization. And then so on. It goes through ecstasy and bliss. And, <laughs> and then it gets to emptiness, nothingness, infinite consciousness. Huh? And finally, to neither perception nor non-perception. That's the eighth jhana. Well, if you're in nothingness, if you are beyond all distinctions, beyond all conceptions, what is there to be aware of? Nothing. And so then, is there any way to tell if we are aware or not? No. So we might be percipient and we might not be percipient. Or maybe somehow both. Neither percipient nor non-percipient. That's the eighth jhana. What comes after that? Nibbana. <laughs> Nibbana. So then you might say, well, if a person reaches that stage where the whole idea of who am I, what am I, 
becomes moot because there is no other thing. There is no distinction. There is no difference. Huh? There's no way to tell even if, you're, if your perception is going or not. Then what is that? Is that oneness? No, it's not oneness. No. That's another trap that people fall into, thinking, oh, it's all one. No. <laughs> because if you can think that it is one, you have duality again. If you can think that, huh? I am one with Brahman, let's say. Huh? Well, that's a nice thought, but it still makes a distinction between I and Brahman. So it's still duality. See? Real oneness means, first of all, nothingness. Because there's no other thing to be aware of. No more divisions. No more distinctions. Uh, no difference between I and that. So that's why Ramana says knowing and being. If there's nothing to know but oneself is what it comes down to. We have been so used to, so conditioned to being aware of other things outside that even if we get ourselves into the eighth jhana and there's nothing else to be aware of to the point where we're not even sure if we're aware or not, there's still our self. So the whole point is, as we've uh, discussed so many times before in our earlier series, The Secret of the Golden Flower, turn around the flow. Huh? Turn the energy, turn the attention around back to yourself and be only aware of yourself, which is pure awareness. So being aware of awareness is enlightenment. Just like Ramana used to say, if, if somebody was having a hard time getting this, <laughs> he would say, do you exist? And of course, the person would say, yes. And he'd say, well, thank you for admitting that. <laughs> that proves that you're self-realized. You've already realized the final point. I am. To be aware of oneself is Brahman. That is what Brahman does or is. Self-awareness. So Brahman is pure, unconditioned, non-dual awareness, aware of itself. That's how come the experience of Brahman is I, I. Not even I am. Because as soon as you have I am implies I am that, which is duality. So when one is actually in the enlightened state, there's no keeping score. Well, there's I and there's that, and then there's the other thing. One, two, three, four, five. See, as soon as you say I am one, well, then you have one, right? <laughs> So you have you could easily have another one and another one and another one. There goes your nice uh, non-dual state. So beyond even the concept of oneness is the concept I I. Actually, it's it's not even a concept. It's only an experience. But what is there to say about it? I I. Hi I. I, I. So <laughs> there is only I on that level. And there is only self awareness. There is no other phenomenon. That is the real self realization. That is the real state. And that is the mature and strong state of actual being. 
ओम तत्सत ओम हरि हे ओम